Hello and welcome to the Game Changer series for Global Entrepreneurship Week 2016. My name is Laura Morrison and today our speaker will be Mel Sherwood who will be sharing her tips on how to make your pitch pitch-tastic. Welcome Mel. Thank you. So Mel, your expertise is in helping people to create their winning pitches. What led you to become a pitching specialist? Well, I started a business about three and a half years ago. I left my full-time employment. I had always wanted to set up my own business and I decided that I would create an online platform for the performing arts industry. I have a background in performing arts as well as in business. And so whilst it was a great idea, I realized very quickly it wasn't going to make very much money. But having said that, I was really good at pitching the idea. And so I was winning pitching competitions. I was involved with an, um, a startup accelerator, Entrepreneurial Spark, and they're very focused on pitching. And so whilst my idea was pretty rubbish, I was really good at communicating the idea and getting people enthused about it. And so people started asking me to help them with their pitches. And I have a background in learning and development as well. And I, I had uh, been a, a trainer and coach for an organization. And so with my performing background and my learning and development background and my ability to pitch, I suddenly realized that this was a really good opportunity. And I think because I saw so many people doing themselves a disservice, they had brilliant ideas or products or services and they were hardworking and intelligent and talented and but they just weren't able to communicate that to other people and I, I thought I have to be able to help these people so and that's how it all, all started and it's just grown from there really. Mm, mm. So you really looked at where, where your skills were and where your strengths were naturally helping people to develop that. Great. Absolutely. Okay, so one, one of the scenarios that you see most entrepreneurs come to you for assistance pitching, is it when they're looking to raise funding, is it when they're looking to make sales, what are, what are the scenarios where you see pitching as being really key for businesses? It's a real mix actually, a, a lot of people come to me because they struggle with their elevator pitch to be fair, where, where their, their networking pitch I like to call it, so they're not quite sure how to articulate what their business is or does when they go to a networking event and you find sometimes the type of events where you have to stand up and speak about your business for 30 seconds or a minute and that's even more difficult sometimes than a longer pitch where you've got to be really economical with your words and make sure that you are very clear and concise when you you communicate that. But then other people will come to me when they're pitching for funding or investment. I'm based in Scotland in Edinburgh and there's a brilliant fund here called the Scottish Edge Fund uh, where businesses can raise up to £100,000. And so I have a lot of people come to me who are pitching for that. That's a three minute pitch. And so trying to get everything about the, the market and the, the competition and the team and all of the things that you need in that kind of pitch into the three minutes people people are quite challenged by. Uh, but I also work with entrepreneurs who are sort of scaling up and they're looking for investment. So uh, I work with a number of organizations and individuals helping mm -hmm. them prepare for that. Um, and obviously sales pitches as well. Although I do say we've, we're pitching all the time. <laughs> we've, been, we've been pitching since we were little kids really, if you think about it. We, we were pitching for more pocket money or to, for another chocolate biscuit or whatever it might have been. So I think uh, there's, you might have heard the phrase, life's a bitch and then you die. I like to say, say life's a pitch and then you fly. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. doesn't matter if you, if you do it well, that is. And that's the thing. It's, it's, it's really, essentially, it, it just boils down to that question. When people say, what do you do? You need to be able to clearly and confidently answer that question. Great. And what engages people? What makes the winning pitch? I think it's a number of things. Firstly, you need to think about it from the, the person who's listening's point of view. What I find sometimes is that people start to pitch or talk about their business, but it's all about them. And really, when people ask you what you do, they don't want to know what you do. They want to know what you can do for them. So it's about thinking about really what 
how, what what are the problems? I suppose that that, that potential customer or uh, potential investor, what you know, what is it that that they want to hear? So understanding where they're coming from is really quite key. The other thing is your own enthusiasm, obviously. If people are not enthusiastic, it's really hard to get other people enthused about their, their product or service. Mm -hmm. So enthusiasm is, is crucial. Mm. So what's your process for pitching? As I know you have a signature process that you like to teach people. I do. It's a three-step process and it starts with clarifying your objective because until you know what your audience, you want your audience to think, feel or do, then you can't really pull together a pitch that's going to connect with them. So it's being very aware that generally a pitch is not about getting the sale or getting the investment or getting that immediate connection with someone. What it is about is creating curiosity so that the conversation continues. So thinking about how you can you can do that um, and understand that, but also, and I mentioned it before, it's about knowing who you're pitching to. So a lot of research is required to understand, really get under the skin of your audience so that you, you can build rapport with them and you can create a pitch that really relates to them. So that's the first step, about, and that's about clarifying your objective. The second one then is when you start to think about, okay, so what goes into the pitch? What do I say? Um, and that's a lot about what you leave out as well as what you put in. One of the challenges that people have is that they want to tell everyone everything about their business and it leaves people more confused. So it's really important to think about, okay, so what are some key elements that I want to share? There's a phrase, and I don't know who came up with it, but I think it's a brilliant phrase, and it says, the more you tell me, the less I remember. So it's about thinking about what are the key things that you want to put in there. And for that, it might be around, so if, for example, you're uh, doing a, um, a, a sales pitch or a, 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 an elevator pitch of any, any sort, actually, it might be about thinking about, firstly, you need to hook them. So how are you going to hook them to listen to you? I think you've probably been in a position yourself where you, you hear pitch quite a number of pitches and they all start with the same thing. Hi, my name is, and I'm from blah, blah, blah. And when you've heard quite a number of pitches, that can just kind of switch off your brain straight away. So what you want to do is stand out from the crowd somehow. And by having a hook of some sort, that really captures people's attention to begin with. And depending on who you're pitching to, you, you'll be able to I'll change that hook potentially. But if it's about if you're pitching to investors, then you might have a hook with a, a you know quite a shocking or interesting statistic about how big that market is or what the problem is. Uh, you might talk, you might have a quote, you might start with a story, and stories are really engaging. So hooking people in is key. Then generally you would be talking about what the problem is that you're you're solving, what your solution is, and what's unique about it. And depending on what the pitch is, is about, if it's um, if you're seeking funding or an investment, you might want to incorporate things like who's in the team and uh, you know how big the market is, who's the competition and why, why you're different, what helps you stand out. So those are the type of things that you would put into your, your pitch. So that's the content part of it. Mm. But then it's not only about what you say, it's quite often about how you say it. So the third step in the process, and it's another C, it's communicate with confidence or confidence, credibility and conviction, I like to say. So as I suppose if, if you're not confident about what you're, you're doing, then it's really hard to, to have, get other people confident in what you're, you're talking about. So it's a matter of what, what, how does confidence show up? What does that look like? What does it sound like? So when you're thinking about delivering, a pitch, then you need to think about how you're coming across. So that might be making sure you're you're dressed comfortably and appropri appropriately, so that you feel good. But then it's about what are you doing with your body language? Is it congruent with your message? Are your shoulders back? Are you making eye contact? Are your gestures open, or are you kind of closed up and and looking nervous? Now, nerves are quite normal. So, and I can give you some tips about that as well if you like. But really thinking about what your body language is doing, and also your tone of voice. So when people get nervous, sometimes they'll either speed up, speak very, very quickly, or they'll speak in a monotone, 
or they'll get really breathy and it, it sounds like they're nervous. So one of the ways that you can combat all of that is to prepare thoroughly and not only that content but your other communication tools, your, your mind, your body and your voice. And so preparing your mind in terms of uh, visualizing a successful outcome for that pitch, for example, rather than thinking about, oh, it's going to be terrible and I'm going to forget what I was going to say and all of that uh, kind of talk. Change that around and start to visualize yourself succeeding in, in delivering it confidently, yeah. uh, using more positive affirmations about when, you, when you're talking to yourself. Um, and just making sure that, yes, I think your mind can be prepared if you are prepared. So if you put the, the effort in, you're going to be much much more comfortable about, about it. Mm. But the other things about, what, you know, even warming up your body and voice. So, for example, <laughs> I, I have a background as an actor, so I'm used to warming up my voice. But I used to go to a networking event in the mornings, and I'm not really a morning person. Mm. And so I sort of, you know, got myself out of bed, got in the shower, got dressed, got myself to the venue. And it was one of those events where there's a bit of, bit of informal networking and then there's a, a point where everybody has to stand up and deliver their 30 to second pitch or a minute pitch. And so I was running a little bit late for this event and I arrived just when they were starting the formal pitching. So it got around to my turn and I, I stood up to, to give my pitch and my voice came out all strange and croaky. And it, I realized that was the first time I'd opened my mouth to speak that day. So I had an, and it, for, for the type of work that I do, it wasn't the greatest advertisement for my, my company, my business. So I, that, from that day on, I thought, right, I am always doing a warm-up for my voice. And it, I do it even before an important phone call, uh, before any kind of pitch or presentation that I do. And it just makes my voice sound clearer and more confident and easier for people to listen to when I'm more in control of it. And when I think about when I'm, I'm talking about warming up, it's really as simple as a, a bit of humming and singing and maybe some tongue twisters to really get your articulators going. Mm -hmm. and, and body the same. We carry so much tension in our bodies. So simple things like rolling your shoulders and to ease some of that tension and just stretching your neck a bit and loosening up all those areas that help us to produce speech. So there's yeah, lots of different things involved in, in communicating with confidence, credibility and conviction. But there, there are a few of the things that I would suggest for people. I think the other thing it's important to remember, and one of the things that I also remind people that I'm working with when they're getting ready to pitch, is that actually you're pitching to people as well. And not to be afraid to let that personality in. It's not got to be perfect. We're human. And I think when you can allow that vulnerability, actually the people that you're pitching to see that human side, see that personality, and are more responsive to it. Absolutely, I agree. I think that's one of the key things is, is making sure that, that authentic you shows up so that there is, as you said, that personality. We all have heard the phrase, people buy people, and it's absolutely true. So I think sometimes we can be doing things that are undermining our credibility without us realizing it. Uh, but generally, if we are uh, um, turn up you know, in a, in a way that we're okay, we're happy to share and we're, we're interested and interesting, then yeah, people will forgive anything. And particularly also if you're, if you're quite passionate about what you do, that tends to be, that, it's like a magnet, I think, that it tends to draw people to you when you are uh, just showing up in that, in that way versus uh, a, a negative way. People, people like people. They, if you're, and I find it a lot with if I'm coaching people in in pitching where it's formal stuff or they have to do a do a presentation. You've got to remember the people who are listening are not monsters. They don't want you to fail. They actually want you to do well. And so I think you're right. They, you know, it's just really important for people to uh, show up and 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 be themselves as well. Mm. What are your views on rehearsals for pitches then? I think there's, I think rehearsals are important 
in some ways and so and depending how high stakes that the pitch is then yes I would suggest that people do rehearse and not a lot of people sort of oh, just run it over in their mind but actually speaking it out loud and getting used to those words coming out of your mouth is really important the challenge is that people want to memorize it mm. and what we don't want is because when you memorize something if there's a, the slightest distraction then you'll forget it and it can sometimes obviously sound very robotic and, re and rehearsed and that's not what, how you want to sound but you do need to practice articulating what it is that, that you do so that they, you, you, and as you, you go along with your business at the beginning it, sometimes it's really a challenge for people is to how do I explain what my business does particularly if it's, it's quite technical and that sort of thing um, but once you kind of establish what your value prop proposition is and, and you are able to articulate that that clearly that the more you say it the easier it becomes and and it sounds very natural so I think rehearsal is important but but don't get too hung up on those words on the page having said that when you've got a very short space of time to deliver a pitch in it is really important to be very economical with your words so the, the more you practice it the better you get at uh, delivering it smoothly I suppose and not having too many pauses or ums and ahs which are going to impact on the time that you've got available to to express what you need to express mm. equally though on that point of pausing leaving and allowing pauses to allow for impact and to allow key points to land I think is something that people sometimes miss when they're pitching and presenting yes I absolutely agree with you and I think I suppose that it's the the challenge quite often is that that yeah they're trying to fit too much into it and so they don't allow allow the time or alternatively sometimes when you're nervous that will happen as well where you just want to get it over and done with and and that's how it comes across that you just want to get it over and done with so yes allowing allowing space and time around around the words is important but people are a bit scared of silence sometimes they feel if they're pitching they need to just keep talking Mm. which is not the case and actually the ideal end for a pitch is for people to be wanting more is to be opening that to questions and to then allow you to showcase the knowledge in the pitch situation and respond to people who may be offering investment or maybe potential clients absolutely yeah you're absolutely right What's the most memorable pitch, Mel, that you've seen? Would you like to share with us some of the highlights from some of the better ones that you've observed? Uh, let me think about what's the most memorable pitch. It's interesting because I often share a story about a memorable pitch that I never saw. And why I think it's so interesting is because it was so memorable to the person who told me about it that, and the way they described it that now I remember that. <laughs> it was, mm -hmm. Apparently, a, a guy who uh, runs a computer repair uh, business had t rocked up to a networking event and literally had a laptop and he threw it on the floor and smashed it and stomped on it and <laughs> said, do you ever feel like this when you, you know, your com computer's not working properly? And everyone, of course, said yes. And he said, well, I can fix that. I'm such and such from such and such. And so there was no doubt in anybody's mind that he's the guy to go to when, when you need your computer fixed. It was a, obviously a, the shop tactic has obviously worked because this person then spoke about it to me and I now share the story as well. So sometimes doing something a bit out of the ordinary is a really great way to have your pitch remembered. Yeah, I think it brings in emotion as well. What he's tapping into is a very human thing that we've all felt <laughs> at different times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. And for people who are a little bit nervous about pitching, like perhaps it's the first time that they're pitching, and I know the number one phobia for most people is the fear of public speaking, um, what would you say to them? What would your recommendations be to manage those nerves? Well, there's a number of things, and I think firstly it's important to recognize that nerves are normal and they're necessary. Nerves mean you care. Every, everybody gets nervous, uh, but there, there's a quote about the fact that everybody gets butterflies, but the professionals get them to fly in formation. And I think that's a really good visual to think about 
uh, when you're thinking about your, your nerves and if I can get those butterflies to just fly in formation so they're nice and calm then then that's that's great and also you can reframe your nerves as excitement it's a similar kind of feeling so once again it's that self-talk if you keep saying oh, I'm really nervous I'm really nervous then you're going to feel really nervous but if you say I'm really excited it's a similar thing that happens to our bodies but it actually just changes our, our headspace about it but essentially there's one key way to to reduce nerves and that's by preparing more so more preparation is equates to fewer nerves and when I was talking about preparation before it really is not just about preparing what you're going to say it is preparing that your your body your mind your your voice and also the environment so if you've got a picture or presentation coming up and you can the more you can find out about where you'll be delivering that the better because then you can start to there these are all known factors and the more you know the less the less, less nervous you will feel about it, I suppose. So if you can picture yourself in, in the room that you'll be speaking and you can think about where you might put your notes or your glass of water, so understanding that. And then if you've got an opportunity to go to the place where you'll be pitching or presenting beforehand, then you can start to think about really owning that space. I like to, if I know it'll be a, a more formal pitch or presentation and there's, you know, where an audience is sitting down, I'll actually arrive early and just get a feel for the place. I'll also go and sit in different areas in the audience. So I've got some kind of perspective of what the audience will be seeing when they're looking at me uh, standing on the, on the stage or the presenting area. So the more you can prepare, it, it, the better off you'll be in terms of managing nerves. And finally, breathing is really the key to managing your, your nerves. So we, when we're nervous, we breathe really shallowly. So uh, our, it affects the way our voice is projected and the quality of our, our voice. So learning how to just take deep breaths, deep, deep diaphragmatic breathing they call it, is really crucial and really just taking three deep slow breaths, so breathing in for four, holding for a count of four and then breathing out nice and slowly is a really good way to just start to calm your, your body and your mind and make you feel really focused and centered. So if, if there's any, any anxiousness is particularly in, in immediately before you pitch a deep breath, a couple of deep breaths is really helpful for managing that. Mm, mm. And what about when the unexpected happens in a pitch? Because it's happened, I think, to most people that have done quite a few pitches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I suppose you just have to go with it and acknowledge it. So there's all sorts of unexpected things that can happen, I suppose. Uh, one of the, the biggest nightmares, I suppose, if, is if you are demonstrating something or you're using equipment and it fails. So I, I always try and minimize the risk, I suppose, in those situations. Just absolutely make sure that that demo works or, you know, practice with your equipment beforehand. But acknowledging that things can go wrong but and moving on and not getting flustered by it I think is is really important and that's where we talked earlier about whether you memorize or don't memorize a pitch and even for example I was uh, I, I did a, a presentation and outside of the room a waiter dropped an entire tray full of plates and glasses and cutlery and it just made this massive smashing noise now it was it was too enormous not to ignore, uh, too enorm uh, enormous to ignore. So it, I just kind of acknowledged it and moved on. If if you can make some kind of little joke about it, it it, it works. I did a, <laughs> a talk at Edinburgh Zoo not so long ago, and the the space where it was held, a lecture theatre style, at, at it backed onto, and there was a big glass wall, but it was covered at the time, but it was wrapped onto the chimpanzee enclosure. So, of course, there was some screeching and some, you know, they, they go, they bang the metal and make all these kind of <laughs> big noises. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just these things happen. You just have to kind of accept them and move on and not get flustered by them. Wonderful, wonderful. And is there anything else that you'd add? When we talked about uh, before, I mean, I think there's three elements to a pitch-tastic pitch, and it's, one is the preparation, 
Another is the practice and thirdly is the passion. So that dash of passion is really going to give your pitch an edge, it will really lift lift it up. I, I've seen, and you may have seen this as well, where you see entrepreneurs pitching their business and they say, I'm really passionate about what I do and I know that this product's going to change the world and everything about their body and their voice screams not passionate, yet they're saying the word passion. <laughs> So I think it's important to actually feel it. So think about the words that you're saying and how do you feel about it? And that's that's when you get engagement because if you are projecting how you feel, then you give the audience an indication how they should feel about things as well. So I think that's really important. Absolutely. And particularly when you're pitching for investment, you have to be investable. You have to be your product or your service's best ambassador. Yes, yeah, you you so do. It's it's crucial. It's you are the key, really. And if you're pitching for investment, they're they're backing the person mm. as well as the business. They want to know that they can be confident that you're going to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. So it really is. I mean, it's absolutely crucial to get it right. And so the better you are at pitching and and presenting, the more success you're likely to have. And so I would suggest if if you're struggling with it or feeling nervous, just stick at it, get help and support because it really will transform your business when you can articulate it clearly and confidently to people. You'll find that, that it, things change completely as, as soon as you start being more engaging and, and, and uh, enthusiastic about what you do. Mm. And I think it's always important if you can as well in these scenarios video it understand how you oh, come really. across yeah that is a, it's a really useful tool and everybody when I suggest it to them and I do that I video both my one-to-one -one coaching clients and the people in my training sessions and everyone goes oh no I don't want to see and you know it's all and, and then it's it's cringeworthy sometimes but it's the best way to learn how you are coming across mm -hmm. sometimes people look and say oh that wasn't so bad. Oh, I, th I I was really nervous, but I don't look nervous there, so I'm coming across better than I thought I was. Other times people will look at it and say, oh, I didn't know I was doing that weird thing with my hand, or I didn't realize that I was swaying all over the place or my feet were shuffling. And until I, you can tell people that, but until they see it for themselves, it doesn't really have the same. I agree, videoing is, is really important. Mm. Mm. Great. Well, where can people find out more about what you do, Mel? My website is www.melsherwood.com and that will take you to my, my business, which is Grow Your Potential, and all sorts of information about pitching and presenting. There's all sorts of hints and tips and resources on, on public speaking and various things on there as well to help people. So a great resource for our listeners today to check out then and to see if they are going to make their pitches pitch-tastic. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise and your time with us today, Mel. It's been an absolute pleasure to hear from you. And I really hope that um, our listeners feel that they can ask questions and contact you and to check out those resources on your website. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.